We are the Women Matters, the, it, the English Women's Gathering of the Wisdom Factory. And we are in February. February, what is it? 11th, 12th, something? It's incredible <laughs> how, the, how the year is going on. <laughs> anyway, now please start with the chickens. Who wants to start? And then you, you give over. Okay, and, I'll start real quickly. Okay. And the others, can you mute yourself, please, while somebody is really, uh, speaking? My name is Christine King. Um, I'm a psychologist and Enneagram teacher for 20 years. And I live in North Carolina, right outside of Asheville. And I love being in this group. Um, Victoria brought me in here. So we all have a connection with how we got here. Some person opened the path for us. And um, I've been preparing some more information about personality and essence. I'm teaching it more directly now. And um, I was going to offer something of that today, but it may well not be appropriate given that many people who are here were not with us when we did that. So I'm here to support the greater good for all of us. And it's good to meet all of you who are here. I pass on to Victoria. Welcome. Thank you, Christine. Um, yeah, I'm glad that you, uh, you're still here. Uh, I mean, I don't mean on the planet. I mean, <laughs> in Women Matters. I, I got it. Got it. I'm also glad that you're still here on the planet. Um, <laughs> I so are we doing introduction? Oh, because Lorraine is new. So welcome, Lorraine. Um, okay, so I'm um I'm Victoria and I'm in San Diego, California. Um, and I am uh let's see, what am I? I'm well, I'm in the arts basically. That's the easiest way to say it, music and art history. And um and actually now my seems like my career is taking a different, very different turn. Um that's getting more involved with, with writing. So I have a number of writing commissions that I'm working on. So a lot of research and it's more, um, my, my career up to this point was much more performance oriented and teaching oriented and lecturing. Um, but now it seems to be going more into writing, um, which I enjoy, but I, I like to be out and about and I love to perform more than life itself. So it's, it's a transition for me. Um, I think that's enough, isn't it? Um, I don't. I don't know how long I've been here. Heidi's the timekeeper, so she'll know. Um, but I. I found Heidi at the very beginning of the pandemic, uh, on Zoom, the brand new. Well, for me, brand new platform, and um, we've just zoomed along ever since. And so it's it's really wonderful to have this community. Thank you. Will you pass on? Oh, sorry. I'll pass on to Hanali. Hello, Hanali. You need to unmute yourself still. <clears throat> Sorry for that. My friend didn't want to unmute suddenly. So <laughs> I'm Hanali. Thank you, Victoria. I'm in Cape Town, South Africa. And um, I'm really grateful to be here with you. I didn't sleep last night at all <clears throat> because I've had a, a spasm in my on the left lower side of my on my on my back. And it went down to my knee, so I was in lots of pain. But I'm glad to be here with you all. I'm involved in many things. I wear many hats. But my passion is really to explore together with others new ways of being, thinking, relating, creating, and sharing. You can say the next level of be being human, where we are evolving towards. And I'm also grateful to see you all. And welcome, Lorraine, as well, from my side. And I'll pass to Gerta. Thanks, Hanili. So from South Africa to Germany, <laughs> in the middle, um, Gertraud, it's an old German name. <laughs> and um, yeah, many different hats as well. Um, as many of us were in the transformation area so I'm a coach, trainer, and consultant, business consultant. So I'm working 
often with leaders. And I have a new <laughs> addition to my to my um, methods and practices, and that is called instant change. And if anybody wants to know a little bit more about that, I can tell you. So it's uh, in German, but now they they are going out into the English field as well. So this is really like to to support and to enhance the 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 energy to wash away all the blockages. Yeah, so that caught my attention some time ago and now I'm certified in it. So that's new for the other ladies. <laughs> And um, yeah, soon to be a grandmother of five and a mother of, of three adult daughters. So it's always something that's worth my attention. And sorry that I couldn't come. So I was like, even next next week, I or this week, I will be in Amsterdam as well uh, again. And then I have to come back by train and. This was all often Mondays, so I couldn't. Okay. Yeah. All right. I Thanks. pass on to Monia. Yeah. Hello. I am Monia in Vienna. And today was a rough day for me. We had craftsmen at home, and our entrance door was completely pulled out and even the frame so there was a lot of noise and I just fled to a coffee shop and then I did extensive shopping <laughs> and uh, there is not much of a carnival in our home but now things are getting hung back and I decide which not to put back on and, and I noticed I had so many magnets you put on your refrigerator which i can't so i put them on the door frame and actually that's ridiculous so i'm just trying to get rid of them but some of them are about 30 or 40 years old and uh, yeah anyway i was trained as a translator and now i'm retired and i'm translating between uh various states of consciousness and stages of consciousness and yeah i'm trying to keep up with all the change not instant change but changes that happen all the time in austria that's about all and i pass on to let me let me talk a little bit because i want to tell lorraine that um Monia was one of the leading figures of the German integral movement because Lorraine is in uh, San Diego integral, I heard, you know. Mm. So uh, with her, we created the integral feminine uh, consciousness field or something about 20 years ago. And from there, we, we went on. So she is like founder of many, many things. She has retired a little bit, but at least she comes to our sessions. So, and uh, first, I tell you a little bit about me. I'm sort of her successor online on, with the integral uh, female uh, consciousness field. So, I organize all these uh, meetings. This one is in English, and I have two or three other ones in German. And uh, yeah, I'm in Italy. I came here for learning Italian opera. So I, I I still have some voice, but I don't sing anymore a lot. So, and I live in the countryside and enjoy life and enjoy digging deeper in the mysteries of, of life, let's say. I'm not so much anymore interested in integral theory because I think I have heard enough <laughs> in, in 25 years. 
<laughs> but I want to sort of live it in some way. And also Gertraud, she was the, the co-founder. We three together with another person, we started with this specific group, you know, the, uh, the Women Matters. There was also Tammy. And in who else? 216. 216, yeah. And Hanneli came immediately afterwards, I think. So we are quite an old group. <laughs> so now I give over to you and you get uh, some more space to tell us something about you. Thank you. Uh, this is quite an eclectic and impressive bunch of women. It's really nice to make all of your acquaintance. Um, I'm originally from New York City area and um, lived in Colorado for a while and then moved to San Diego about 40 years ago to go to graduate school in psychology. So I'm a clinical psychologist and was for about 10, possibly 12 years a neuropsychologist. And, um, and I'm bringing to Integral sort of a a uh what a background in um understanding and appreciating what the body contributes to all of these ineffable experiences um whether it's we space or you know resonance or all of this stuff and i get frustrated when i listen to many of the men in integral because they always want to climb 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 and they don't seem to get the sense that we have to descend into our bodies and befriend our bodies rather than just try to keep transcending them. So I've always had an issue with this and I've struggled with it. And I do think um, that women have, you know, a point of view that's absolutely essential if we're really all going to heal and if the society, which is a mess, uh, whether it's in Europe, you know, whether it's in South Africa, it's, we're really struggling. Um, it's so painful to watch. So, um, you know, so all of these churn around and about three years ago, I got a divorce after a 24 year marriage. And of course that threw me into a tailspin. Um, so, you know, I've been reassessing everything. Plus, I'm moving toward retirement. I'm also retired. So whatever my life was at one time, it isn't anymore. And I'm kind of constructing my life from the ground up. And it's an opportunity. And other times it's terrifying. And I wake up at three in the morning wondering, <laughs> what's the rest of my life going to be? So, you know, that's sort of where I am in kind of a major transition at the same time. I'm starting to appreciate who I've become over the years. And I like, you know, I like that person. Uh, flawed, definitely. Um, a ways to go, definitely. But I'm enjoying my life more than I have before. So that's all a good thing. So I'm, you know, if there's anything else you'd like to know or anything I left out for the moment, let me know. No, thank you. I think Thanks it's for funny. having me. Yeah, that's uh, the oh. other Christine brought you over, but she can't be in today with us, but next time. So what I'm yeah, hearing... Thank what? you. Thank you for pointing out that, um, yeah, like like the, the brain just, I don't know, if you just think you can last, that can last maybe for three weeks <laughs> that you remember <laughs> that you have yeah. to embody it ingrain it into your body so it can last so even on this area it, yeah so mm. it's very crucial oh That's yeah, yeah. Is, uh, very <laughs> into that as well so ah. thank you for pointing that out i wanted yeah. to, to suggest to talk about uh, today about our way of living integral i heard it with many people here how we, uh, Monia, you want to say something? Yes, I wanted to say, how do we embody integral? Maybe even better. I'm very thrilled that you are a neuropsychologist. And um, 
because I am also of the same opinion that the body is about the anchor of everything we do. Mm -hmm. And this is because I got a new hip. And <laughs> now I'm just not running around, but I'm much more better on my legs anymore than before because I had a terrible year last year. So anyway, it changes. Uh, what I was wondering about, because uh, a couple of days ago, I bought myself a new pillow uh, to relax uh, the, the neck. And my dreams have become much more vivid ever since. And so I'm really, uh, I know I, I want to talk about dreams all the time, but still, I'm really interested uh, about your opinion, how can we embody the integral and be aware of how we embody it and at the same time open up to new frontiers. As you said, the men wanted want to, in Austria as well, they just always transcend, but include also. And um, yeah. Uh, I would be very, very interested in embodiment, whatever, integral or, yeah. So you said you are, you feel all right with yourself. And I'm very sorry to hear about your divorce because that's, I have been married for, I don't know, more than 50 years. And <sighs> it's just terrible to put so much energy on something that drains you, in my opinion, if you, if you get a divorce, it's, yeah. I'm, yeah, I, I really am compassionate about that. Mm. But amazingly, our generation, and then now I'm past 80, our generation has less divorces. Mm -hmm. They are just, they stick together, no matter how much they fight, they stick together. And even if the children are out of the house, they stick together. So obviously, sometimes you just can't leave. You just so yes. much twice yes. uh, that you you don't even know what you are by yourself. So I congratulations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you said it's three years past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. So you smile yeah. again. I I can't take credit for the divorce. It was my husband who left me. Yeah, well, uh... I mean, he didn't exactly leave. We were living apart because he was on the on the East Coast. I was on the West Coast. And, you know, we were drifting. It was that slow drift. Mm. And I'm so doggedly loyal. I probably wouldn't have initiated. But at this point, I'm so grateful he did that. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I may never have done that. I'm so loyal. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, a lot of self-examination and really a chance to look at, now here's something Integral talks about all the time, shadow. Mm -hmm. And they don't know the first thing about dealing with shadow. I mean, it's, you can't, it's not something you cognitively work on. Mm. You You get a gut punch and you know that that gut punch has something to do with shadow. And then it takes a lot to really marshal the courage to face the thing that you have been running away from. I mean, that's the essence of shadow, right? You're running from something because it's too painful. I mean, it's understandable. It's very human. But with the right kind of support, um, and more often from women, uh, women aren't afraid to work hard and to feel pain. Well, they're not as afraid as men are. And uh, that's, of course, my opinion. But um, And so my experience of women versus men in dealing with this stuff, whether I'm the therapist or the person involved in the relationship, is that women seem to be able to marshal more courage, like they're moved by caring for the other person and men's cosmology you know caring doesn't enter into it and they aspire and they do wonderful things and they have a sense of duty and all of that good stuff but with women we're sort of moved by the people we encounter 
And I think it helps us hang in there longer. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering you know? what we are talking about, because we are a group talking, everybody has uh, uh, the word, not only two people. So I yes. wonder where, where to, to bring the topic to. So embodiment and the difference of men and women, I heard out of this. But I'm still wondering because uh, Lenore comes from the integral scene. And uh, in my opinion, um, the three to one shadow work is very mental, very, very intellectual. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. uh, what I would really like to talk about is, is there any way to uh, connect it with the body? Well, uh, it's just it's just one of the topics that might yes, just today. Yeah, yeah. But uh, sure. Heidi can pick whatever, whichever. Yeah, I would like to hear the other people's uh, mm -hmm. ideas mm -hmm. about okay. that. Yeah, let's let's start with Hanelima. Yes. <laughs> Your t cell phone doesn't want to unmute you, so you may leave it open when you succeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll jump in with or two if Connelly isn't connecting. Yeah. If not yeah. connecting. Okay. okay. You start, uh, Christine, and Hanelli tries to following, open. Following the waves of essence, we know essence to our bodies. Our core self comes into the world with a particular essence, it manifests itself, and then a personality shows itself. What I love to notice is viscerally, when is essence here in guiding the moment, or when is personality, or when do they work together? And that's what I'm teaching now. And I'm loving it because it is visceral, and it's not cerebral, and it can take us to our deepest, most loving place. And so there's a place where integral and Enneagram really do work together often. I've seen them on stages together and they complement each other. And that's just my version of it. So others, others about embodiment, I don't want to take up more time, but it is always there if we're willing to put our intention and attention. Those two are the key word. Intention to be deeply in my body and my attention always right there. Christine. You made it. I made it at last, ladies. <laughs> Some techno gremlins on the line tonight. Um, if I think back of my own journey, discovering Integral in 2010, I discovered it through another modality, which was in, about embodiment, the language of energy. And that was that's a movement, these movements, uh, breath and sounds that you used to play with different energies. And since then, it expanded in different ways. But I want to give myself an example, Lorraine, of what you just spoke about. I woke up last week, sat Sunday, with terrible pain in my lower left side of my back. Not my back itself, on the side. Like a, like a, almost like a pinched nerve, like really intense. And I didn't do anything weird at all that could have caused it. I didn't hurt myself or anything. And it really, it really escalated like really badly limped down my left side of my leg onto my knee as well. I was really curious about this because I'm so sensory, I'm very visceral personally because of this modality and other things I did in regarding embodiment. And, and I went, obviously I went to an osteopath and he was doing lots of things with me, and he actually made it worse, mm -hmm. not better. So I was in terrible pain, which I'm not used to. And it, it started dissipating when I started questioning myself, what is this really about? What is it that I must feel in my body, emotionally and physically, that's, that I must let go of now? It's time for it to go. And I immediately knew, I immediately knew what it was. It was, but the moment I became aware of that question, what is this really about? It started as, it's not good yet, but it's much better now. 
after we've been in terrible pain. I think we also, personally, I feel from my own body of wisdom that I share with the world, that the more we have a more interconnected presence, it's not, it's not compartments. It's all one. It's not like, like it, we can look at it very linearly and reductionary, and then it then we go into the mind. Then it's then it's logical stuff and things like that. But the more we see it as a as a whole, all the systems working together in perfect harmony in our bodies and our, all our different light bodies, then that that difference between the ones that are that are so in, integrated into each other that you can't really say so this or that. But for me, that sense of that incredible pain was, this is something in my, you wouldn't call it the shadow, something that I need to work on, that I'm that I've neglected in me, that wants to be seen and heard now. And to sit with it, even through that terrible pain, to sit with it, to get to what at the core of it. And now I'm already feeling another way of my visceral abilities has escalated because of that. So it's not bad. It, it was terrible, but it was not bad. It, it's like it's opening up something in me. I can't say exactly yet what that is, but I can sense it. That I'm my my perspective, my I would say my presence or my perspectives, but rather my ability to perceive and receive, to be receptive, has suddenly expanded. Whoa. And I can't yet put it in a little container and say this is it, but I can feel it. So I'm just staying with it. And I think the fear for a lot of people, especially men, is they, they don't know how to feel that type of anxiety, perhaps, or that intensity, and to express it because of their emotional, emotional availability as well. Are they available emotionally to, to be truly stepping into it and to experience it? Now, when I was trained on this modality in 2010, we were only a few women in the group. Most of it were, were men. And of that men, 50% of them struggle to really feel it in their bodies, the, the deep core, real primal energies. And they struggled with it because they wanted to mentalize it. And you can't. You must just go into it and feel it. And the movement for me always, as a dancer myself, you feel it's you, you're in your body. You're not outside of your body. You're in your body. But I danced outside my body for decades. And it's only for the last 20 years that I've discovered to dance inside my body, which is something completely different. I loved dancing outside my body too. It wasn't bad, but it was different. So if I think for all of us, we have a certain aptitude to something that's natural to us, that help us to express it. And I've seen it working with many, many people in the business world, leaders with, with the same modality in a normal business sense. They, they're curious. They want to explore. What is this stuff? I, do, I don't label it. I don't tell them it's this or that. Just giving them the experience. You can do a strategy session with a lot of leaders and you put them through some of these movements and sounds and breath work and they, they love it. Something happens to them. And then, then the mind doesn't block it because they're feeling it in their bodies. But I've, I've said enough now. I'm complete. Now. Uh, whoever wants to continue. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Trauma del Victoria. Well, I'm a little worried because I think I must be a man. <laughs> Maybe this hat is the beginning of that realization. Um, but everything you've said about men so far is fits exactly. And um, lately, strangely enough, I, I was thinking about that anyway, because I have um, through my, I have a daughter who's 31 years old, and she's very much a 31 year old. And so I'm trying to painstakingly work my way through all the, the woke. Um, I don't know if they use that term in Europe, hopefully not. But here it's very, uh, very a la mode. Um, I'm trying to work my way through with all the complications. I mean, just to like address people her of her generation is a big effort whether we say they or you or I, I don't it's very confusing but it seems that now that ironically now that the genders are becoming more fluid um theoretically which of course I mean of course it's all 
a construct because the human race is still the human race and always was and always will be. So it's just a matter of semantics, I think, a lot of it. Um, but I've been feeling more and more like I'm actually a man. And so it was. it's, it's quite interesting. I mean, that was anyway before today's conversation. But I've always wondered why I didn't acknowledge that I had a body. And maybe that's the, the root of it. But anyway, I want to talk about myself. But that I just wanted to share that that's, to me, that's very intriguing, because I've never heard that before. And, um, and it's kind of funny, because I'm, I'm doing a lot of things in Buddhism right now. And um, the favorite, right now, the favorite quote of like every Buddhist teacher in the United States is, for some reason, um, you know, these things go in waves, is a quote from James Joyce from the Dubliners, um, where he says, um, Mr. Duffy, it's the, the character in the story, Mr. Duffy lived a short distance from his body. And um, and uh, everyone loves that quote. They, for some reason, people, you know, because they don't know where it came from, they just got it from somebody else. They they all think it's James Baldwin, which I think is actually very funny because <laughs> that brings a whole new spin on it. But it's James Joyce. Anyway, um, so I'm I'm just really interested in, interested in that whole thing about the the embodiment and the body, like, Anyway, I won't talk anymore, but I but that's I'm very intrigued and I'd love to hear more from those of you who, you know, have spent your lives on mind and body things. Thank you. Heidi, we don't hear from you. And let's do first the air trout. You can go first. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that there is this uh, female male thing. Um, I want to to bring another aspect into it. Um, in WeFlow, we have a we have a practice that that is called uh, Silver Diamond, and this is for overwhelm and actually it's it's like getting back into the body and really getting uh like where does it reside how does it what's the texture how does it feel like and so to to get you into the present moment and from there like overwhelm doesn't exist it's just oh yeah interesting it's there's a pain here or there's a yeah a density or whatever and 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 for me coming back to my body um helps me to yeah to get off tailspin to to get off overwhelm and and really like like I think you cannot be in the present moment if you only think it. <laughs> it's not possible. So you have to be there to 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 be in that present moment. And um, from that, many things can be solved a lot easier than from just headspin. And talking about instant change, it's like you have to address all three, like the thoughts, the cells, and the energy field at the same time. So you cannot solve most problems you cannot solve just with the brain. And to be just in the body and never think about it, it's it's the same. I mean, it doesn't work either. So... And to neglect that there's energy <laughs> going on doesn't work. So, so I, I think, yeah, just, just appreciate the aspects of life in the physical form. And that's why we came here. We're here <laughs> because we want to explore that 3D realm and this bodily thing. And and the the thoughts that make a difference how you think about the world and the energy. So so for me it's not either or. But if you just go on one side, then 
you might be lost. And the body is the one you can always come back to <laughs> and not get lost so easily. Yeah, thank you. I want to say two things about this gender um, insecurity. I, for most of my young life, I wanted to be a boy because I thought uh, boys have a better life. My brothers, you know, and I was a smaller sister. So this confusion was um, for a long time. I didn't accept my femininity and I was trained to be in the in the head. And always in the head. And for a long time, I didn't even know what it means to to go out of the head. I mean, to to I I try to make stupid things for to realize for to demonstrate that I'm not in my head. But I mean, it was in my head too. So discovering what the what the body is, it's still sometimes um, a challenge. But I know the difference now. You know, when I'm. Uh, uh, in, in a different place or again in my head and the head is pulling, you know. So the other thing I wanted to tell you, I just came across today about, um, uh, uh, it's a German person, so I cannot share it with all of you, that tomorrow, our time, six o'clock in the morning to about 13, um, there will be a heavy, heavy, heavy sun flare coming in into the, uh, and on the on the earth, so I don't know what it means, but this person said we should try to be very very calm and very be in our body, be in uh, in in stillness to see this as a gift, an information gift from the cosmos or something like that. So I just wanted to share it with you to to be aware if you may feel different. We were talking about energy before, you know, and this definitely is energy. It must be in a in an amount which is incredible. So almost never been before. So they say I cannot prove it, but just wanted to share it with you. Yeah. So. In some, coming back to the gender thing, uh, in some way I am compassionate with these people who think they need to be somebody else than they are, because for me it's a normal part, normal stage in life that we don't want to be as we are. <laughs> and then we need some of you like like Lorraine or, or uh, Christine, the other Christine, the psych psychotherapist to find out who we really are, or also spiritual teaching, you know, who, who we really are. And I'm discovering now, having done a, a, a reading, a, a astrological reading, that I have very much of the genuine female um, uh, energy in me. <laughs> So it doesn't show in, in nail polish or, or earrings or something like that. <laughs> but I think I know what she means. <laughs> so I give over to you whatever you want to add to our conversation. Whoever feels drawn to say something. Yeah, I I just think there's so many one ways to be grounded in our bodies. We just walk out the door, depending upon the weather perhaps without shoes on and just walk in the grass and be in the forest. And that takes us deeply into our bodies, especially if we're not chattering away. Too much. I think less talk in general for a lifetime, much less talk and much sensating. When I see what's going on in my body, that's where the wisdom is in my humble opinion. I just feel that the body, it, I don't know, I feel like my body has always betrayed me. Uh. So, so I basically, I think I lost interest in the body at a very early age. Well, I don't think I ever had any interest in it, but, um, and my body was easy prey um, for trauma experiences from, from members of my family. So, I think that for me, the the body is too dangerous a place. And um, and my, my mind was always safe. Well, so I thought, but now I'm thinking otherwise. But, um, 
but the body i felt like i i had a, that the the mind for me was the sovereign that was my territory nobody could touch it and if i if i did something bad to my mind then that then at least i could i could carry the responsibility and make decisions about it but my body i mean now uh, that i'm old and <laughs> derelict uh, not derelict, that was the wrong word. Um, <laughs> but I'm really interested in what you said, Hanali. I'd love to hear more about that because um, I, I've had really, 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 I, I mean, for me, serious health issues because I don't sleep anymore and I've, well, I have all kinds of issues I don't want to go into. It's very tedious, but um, but I have a whole team of doctors uh, trying to make sense out of it, what's going on. And, um, and that the male female thing, again, is very interesting because my, my psychologist who is uh, a woman and she's a very, um, she's Jewish and from New York, from Brooklyn. And she's like, it's all no nonsense. Like she's not going to take any nonsense from anybody, male or female, alive or dead. She's really fabulous. And she just keeps saying, you know, you're going to get nowhere because all your doctors are men and they're just dismissing the fact that you actually you know, women do go through menopause. Women do have these different biological issues. They have different hormones. And, you know, the men are just going to turn a blind eye because they don't know what to do. And they but then they feel inadequate and then they feel threatened and then they lash out and tell you it's all in your brain. And um, so she's my champion. But ironically, because she's not a medical doctor, you know, kind of puts it back on me. She's telling me to go to Mexico and buy all kinds of really astronomically expensive supplements and stuff. So, so it's a whole journey. So now I'm back to this space again, like I don't have time for that. Like I, as I said at the beginning, professionally, I have a lot of assignments now to, to write and to do research and it's very intensive work. And, and I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, I, I don't want to go down to Mexico and risk being kidnapped and <laughs> thrown into a barrel. And I mean, it's so I, I don't know, again, I feel like, again, my body's betraying me in some way, shape or form. And it's annoying because um, at least with my mind, I can do things and there aren't so many impediments in the way. And if there are impediments, it's kind of interesting to engage with them, um, like from a spiritual point of view and sort of parse out what's happening. But I feel like my body I mean, I haven't slept for, I can't even remember how long, but anyway, I'm not going to get into myself, but, I, but Hanali, what you said was so intriguing to me because um, I wonder if I could ask my body what's happening, what it would say, but it's like, it's an estranged, I really live a distance from my body. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to take over. Are you connected? Can you hear us? Um, yes, I can. can I... Exactly. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you go. Go ahead. But you well, to... yeah. I think Victoria wanted to hear from you, Hanali, because of your personal experience. Oh, oh, oh no, I no. See. Okay, so I misunderstood. No, I misunderstood. I want to hear from I thought... No, she, she, I think I understood that Victoria just wanted to to understand more about what you hear when you ask your yeah. body. But yeah. I mean, it's a personal experience. Our bodies speak to us in different languages. Um, but I just want to tell you, Heidi, before I forget, when you spoke about the sun flare, I felt it in my in my back already for two, three days. I also heard about it. Because I always feel it before it comes, these type of things. My, it's my going on for a few days already, yeah. but tomorrow yeah. will come a very heavy wave. Yeah, and the and the human the human resonance of the earth yes, has also exactly. increased. It has a big spike, so there is something cosmology wise going on. But as you're saying it, I could it went down my spine. You anyway, know, I could feel it uh, going down, and the energy that I felt from it. How we can really utilize it is if that's maybe the right word is on the insides of our arms. It has something to do with. Because we can easily feel very drained and uh, lethargic and during such sun flesh of this nature. But there's something going on with our arms. I can't tell you what, but I can feel it already. There's, 
it's definitely going to affect the our biology, if I can call it like that. Um, now that's what's coming now. I also feel that uh, in terms of the gender thing, obviously we can't generalize, but I wanted to share with you ladies just something very funny. Recently, I was sharing about the possibility gap with a male new acquaintance, but I didn't want to give him a whole mental journey about what we're doing with all this stuff and so on. So I created a rhyme, a poem, a story that I told through a poem for him to, to take him on a little journey and to discover all the aspects of what we actually do in the possibility gap when we enter the void, what happens when we go into liminal space. And he didn't hear a thing that I said. <laughs> he said to me afterwards, he's left brain. And he, he said it, I didn't even go there. He said to me, I was trying to figure out what's the next rhyme going to be. So I didn't hear a thing what you said. So you, you would hear the last part of the sentence, which is the rhymes last word. And then he, in his mind, he starts to dream up another word that will rhyme with that one. So he didn't hear a thing I said for 45 minutes because he was he was preconceiving what, what rhyme will, 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 would I've used in the story. So he missed the whole story. And then he asked me a very interesting thing. And I think it's very relevant to what we speak about embodiment as well. He was telling me that how can you hold two extremes? How can you hold two polarities? And I think women specifically, because we have more fibers between our left and right brain hemispheres, we can do it naturally. It's not to say they can't, they just need to do a lot more work around it. Because for him it was, he's a very aware person, but he, he says he's really struggling to be able to hold. The hold is an embodiment thing. You hold something, you literally hold it in your body, in your presence here. And he said he could, he, I can't understand that people like us can hold polarities without getting sidetracked by one or the other. So it's a both and, not an either or. And, I th and I've sensed that there is something on the embodiment level as well. And this ability of us to switch between the, the hemisphere, for example, and to access our cell memory, our kinesthetic intelligence as well, the muscular intelligence, which is more natural to us because when we give birth, even if you don't have children, it's in your genes as a, as a woman, born as a woman, to, to have gone through that intensity of a birth, even if it's not natural. You, you, you held the baby inside of you for nine months. That's very physical. Men don't do that. So they feel cheated sometimes, do I feel, and that mm -hmm. then creates the distorted masculine. Mm -hmm. that help for you? Lorraine, if you speak, yes. No, it's oh. yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, along those same lines, Victoria, I just wanted to mention your body has been taking care of you all these years. It knew that these feelings and these past experiences were so bloody painful that it wanted to protect you. So it shut those things down. And now it seems to be wanting your attention. I mean, that's just another, you know, it's just another way of thinking um, that your body can be, you know, can be befriended um, and is not out to get you. It's really out to help you. That shutting down from your past helped you survive. Whatever it was, you couldn't have survived without your body shutting certain things down, closing certain doors. Uh, and you got through. And you created a life that you've loved. And now you're at a point where you're asking, well, let's see, is there anything behind one of those doors? Um, so, you know, maybe thinking about it in those more gentle terms, um, you know, maybe it won't be such an enemy. Anyway, just a thought. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I have to... I have to leave. It's been delightful meeting all of you, and I hope to see you again. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for having been with Bye. me. Bye-bye. No rain. Let's do a sort of wrapping up or check out whatever, what did we learn today? 
How was it? What did stand out for you? Just a real quick question. I'm intrigued by the idea of this energy. Where, where can, because I'm not in the same zone in Europe, my dear friends are here. What, how can I learn more about that? What would I Google? Yeah, I have uh, things in German, but um, uh, maybe you find it also about the but sun. I think it's breath. the sun radiation. It's so it's universal. The sun it's not, radiation. Yeah, and just... the Schumann, Schumann energy. Maybe Hanely knows more about it because she is in the English speaking. She may send it to you, some information. Is it okay? Hanely, now you're gone again. <laughs> Your cell phone, that's funny. <laughs> she doesn't get the right thing. You need it to keep it on. sun radiation. It's still, we don't hear you. It's still not on. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. I've, gone, I've gone to the sun and back <laughs> to go and ask the sun, what is this all about? <laughs> no, I'll see if I can send you something, Christine. One of my friends on Facebook published quite, uh, I'll, okay. I'll copy it for you and, and email it to you. Email would be great. That's my best. Yeah, you can email it to everyone. To everybody, yeah. That's good. Anybody who knows about it, send it to me in an yeah. email. It would be fabulous. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, just take care of your body as well. With Stay hydrated. Yeah. I, yeah, the, the person said, drink a lot, a lot, a lot of good water. And for you, it will be at night. For us, it will be the early morning. So, you know, take a big bottle of water and... When, when you wake up, drink, 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 drink. Yeah. So you need to send it out right away, more or less, so that they can can read it. Still. I would love it. Because I, I felt weird things last night and this morning. And I had to cancel all my appointments today, except us. Because something was going on in my body um, that I did not understand. Yeah, I think it's already almost a week that these uh, big sound flares come, but now he explained that there were three uh, together and the, the they all united. They came together, all three ones, and this will be the mega one which will hit us. Do, do others of you who felt it, do you feel very drained as if the energy was just so much boost, or do you feel like it's getting more? Uh, what I have understood that you need to try to not not be preoccupied, but just go into into and see, uh, listen for what it's um, telling you. So in some mm -hmm. way, it's fine. It's fitting for our uh, conversation. Uh, I think you were frozen. Can you repeat what you said? Oh, I was frozen. We ha you have to watch out for what for the information which is being given and uh, trying to still your mind and uh, to be receptive and to and not to get uh, excited by or, or fearful by what you feel of strange things which might be but uh, really go into silence uh, into meditation mood and see what's uh, telling you not with the mind probably <laughs> but with uh, the whole whole body whole whole existence. Water is important. Thank you for that. Because I have not been drinking water before. So that's huge. Thank you. Actually, uh, the la I, I was not aware. I mean, I was aware in general that the sun is doing more than usual, but not like, like very specific. And the last... And it came together with that instant change thing. But the last weeks, I would say two or three weeks, um, I had this feeling as if my brain was expanding. Like there was a lot going on. I thought the, maybe it's the, the peculiar gland and, and whatever. So I, it's not headache, but almost. I mean, like. It's, it's uh, headache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah not a not a normal headache it's it, it was just like working a lot inside and and feeling like there is some kind of expansion and um yeah 
And I had, I, I don't know how long I had that, but for some time I had some tinnitus like things going on. And um, yeah, to, to work with this, it's, so it's, it's going on and off. And uh, today it vanished, so I'm I'm not sure what's going on. But but once you told you said that uh, Heidi, I I thought yeah <laughs> that resonates. <laughs> so it's not not so much in the whole body and not so much drain, but more more like really like what is that? <laughs> and my takeaway from today is is like we need all parts and the body is the most neglected and and that's why it need yeah we need to come back to to really have this and and there's one more aspect that i wanted to say it, it's also the the coherence like if left and and right hemisphere and body heart and gut come together, then we are in flow and then we can do things that we couldn't do before because we have access to so much more information than just with our busy, <laughs> busy minds. Yeah. Can you give over for the checkout? To Monia. Well, tomorrow I will, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, I will have a pedicure for my nails. And I wonder what, what she will be doing. So I'm really watching out that she doesn't teach me, um, which is not very serious. But still, um, yeah. So I always drink a lot of water and... Let's see, in two weeks, we can tell each other what happened to, tomorrow. Yep. And I pass on to Victoria, and I'm still wondering about her hat, where she oh. got it from. <laughs> I got it. Um, well, this is the, the power of the internet, I guess. Um, unfortunately, I... Uh, my my email is still on AOL because I I had it for decades and I was I tried Gmail and I didn't like it, um, and so you have to pay money if you don't want advertising to be invasive. And I was just minding my own business one day and um, suddenly this hat appeared. There's a huge photograph of it in the middle of whatever I was doing with my email, and I. I remembered all the fairy stories of the like the little fairies that live in the woods and the um you know a, I guess it's an acorn I don't know mm. anyway um so I I just I on a whim it was it was what my friend calls an impulse buy um so I'm kind of ashamed of it I mean I'm mean, not ashamed of the hat I'm ashamed of the fact that I succumbed to advertising so um so naively on the other hand, when it arrived, I was really happy because it's very, very, very warm. It's it's fabulous because I don't, I don't even have a ceiling here in my kitchen. Um, the whole ceiling came down uh, during the storms and and half of my house is completely flooded and and the roof still leaks when it rains. And so there's no point turning on the heat because it just goes right out the window. So um, so I'm kind of living in a in a sort of, you know primal way which is kind of fun but it's cold anyway that's the hat i think that that's enough of a checkout right there but it's nice to see everybody and i wish you all a wonderful um time till we meet again and i'll pass to christine thank you i think i already did so i don't want to take up more, more time no, thank you oh you already did oh i'm sorry I, I lost track for a minute i had to go get some tea okay well, who, who, well, just jump in, whoever is missing. I'll go. <laughs> thank you, ladies. It was delightful. I really feel it in my body. So thank you for that. Um, and I, what I take from today is uh, we are 
the goddesses of the earth. We've got a big role to play. I think in just be an example, not to necessarily teach other stuff. We can do that. That's also beautiful. But being it, just being who we are, I think that's that's for me what I take from this today. And um, yeah, I think myself, I was not never really thinking about my brothers, but my sister was. She also thought they got more than we did. And I think the the older generation, she's much older than me. It's it's for them a bigger thing than the younger generations. Perhaps not even. But it, it just reminded me of this beautiful interplay between the the male and the female and the, how we identify with and as the they and the them. With with my daughter's friends is also huge, the they and the them. And you have to be very careful of your language. Otherwise, I feel insulted. So it's also a new world for us because we're not used to that. So it's again, we're expanding, talking about our brains expanding. We must make space for more. Thank you. I'm complete. Heidi. Yeah, thank you, everybody. I found it especially delightful today talking about these topics and with the new person who joined us. I'm really happy to. And I hope she will come back. And yeah. Good topics and take care for the sun flare and yeah. use it as well as you can. Yeah, maybe you'll. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.